Hi, I'm Steve Plum, Editor-in-Chief of SMB Media. I'm here today with Jason Hillenbrand, Vice President of Product and Engineering for Amata. Yes. We're here at Fabtech. Uh, this is your 20th year now? At least. I've lost count. We know it's more than 20. <laughs> yes. So you have another great uh, booth here. Tell us a, a few, some of the highlights here. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, we've got uh, quite, a, quite a few new machines here this year. Um, we also have some machines we brought the last year or so as well. Um, we have a whole lineup of vending machines, uh, a lot of it focused on uh, addressing the uh, employee shortages, the skilled labor problems that we're having. Uh, so there's automatic tool change, press brakes over here. There's auto tool assist um, setups where it doesn't automatically load the tooling but it has everything already set up to just slide the tools in and out. Uh, makes it very simple. We have robotic bending, uh, completely automatic robotic bending. And one of the new machines that we've introduced this year towards the back of our booth is our Cobot. So it's our HRV press brake, which is uh, built in High Point, North Carolina, in our facility there, uh, along with the Fanuc uh, robot Cobot attached to it. So how much has the industry changed over the, the years? You mentioned the workforce uh, a shortage and skills gap, and, and how are companies like Amata really addressing that with things like the Cobot and the automation, and has it taken effect, really, that you've seen? Yeah, it's um, yeah, obviously it's changed. If you go to any meeting, conference, uh, or whatever, that's always one of the, if not the top uh, problem, that's the second. And, um, yeah, we, so a lot of what you'll see if you walk around the show in general, uh, when you look at a lot of the large manufacturers like Amata, you're going to see a lot of different types of automation on there. So uh, things that will automatically uh, walk the operator through the setup process or even the bending process. Um, same with the lasers, you're going to see lots of automation, part picking, uh, robots, uh, autonomous mobile robots that will move material from one machine to another process. Uh, so there's just countless ways in which uh, we're trying to address that, even with the controller itself. So the controllers themselves will uh, walk the um, operator through the setup process. Uh, it'll ver it uses facial recognition to verify the level of skill that that operator has, so it only allows certain kinds of functions. So just tons of stuff. We could go on for another hour about that. Well, we have some exciting news, though. Yeah. That you're going to be introducing the Regis uh, 3015. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So the Regis 3015, the machine that's behind us here, we actually introduced this machine a few years ago, and it was available in 6 kilowatt, 9 kilowatt, or 12 kilowatt versions. Uh, this year, this machine behind us is our new Regis with 26 kilowatts on there. Uh, so this is the highest powered machine that Amata has introduced to date. Uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, we're utilizing our own fiber laser technology that we've been using from the beginning. So when we first introduced our laser in 2010, 2011, uh, we've been developing that technology ourselves. So. But jumping up to, to 26 kilowatt, what does that mean in terms of applications and use, performance? Speed. <laughs> yeah. Speed. Uh, lots of speed. Um, so higher productivity from that standpoint. But it allows, it, it, it gives you some other options too in the manufacturing process. So uh, customers now want to be able to take parts right off the laser, go right to the next process, whether it be bending, welding, whatever it may be, without having to do these secondary operations like grinding uh, or removing the oxidation on there before they go through the welding process. So that's nothing new, but the limits have been how thick can we do that with. So now you're talking about you know, three quarter inch, you know, mild steel, stainless, um, aluminum, where we can cut clean cut and go, and, and at speeds that are just absolutely phenomenal on some of the cutting speeds. Are there certain applications that you envision uh, using those right from the get go? Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything really specific. Um, you know, for, for years, customers have just been able to make do with, you know, cutting the thick mild steels, especially and going through that process of removing that oxidized edge. That's commonplace. But now I think this is just going to help them reduce their cost in part because, you know, the more times you touch it, higher the cost of that part's going to go. 
So this is going to help with that. Um, and just a couple other things to bring up about, you know, the 26 kilowatts on this machine is a, is a big deal, but this is a full linear drive, so all three axes are linear drives, so it's a high accuracy machine. It accelerates very quickly. Um, and then the autonomous features on this machine, again, going back to the skilled labor shortages. So this machine uh, will operate uh, basically without an operator being present from a standpoint of looking at the uh, nozzles, checking the lens, centering nozzles, changing nozzles, uh, various things in there, you know, checking if the cut, it loses the cut, it'll go through a process of resetting that. So a lot of things that this machine will do without the requirement of having an operator right there with it. So I know we're only on day one of the show, but uh, any initial feedback that you've received? Uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Uh, customers have been Everybody's really interested in high wattage, and, and you can see there's way higher wattages than this, but there becomes a point of diminishing returns. So, okay, you can have the super high wattage machine, but now what customers are realizing is, well, we've got all these parts, they're sitting here, they're not moving, we're not keeping the constant process uh, flow going. So they're, um, they're really looking at automation a lot. Mm -hmm. So when you look at something like this, you have to look at automation. Right. Um, we have our AMSCL automation over here on our Ventus 9 kilowatt laser. Um, we build the AMS here in the United States as well, down at High Point. And then we have our part picker, our TKL on the back mm -hmm. side of that. So we have uh, several different things. We, when we show the customers and the machines and we talk to them, we don't talk to them about the machine per se, we talk to them about the process. Mm -hmm. And what does this mean? Okay, great, you wanna buy this high wattage machine, but what does this mean downstream? Right. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you for the interview, appreciate right. it.